What's up guys? Welcome back to episode six of your soul crushing 2023 MC500 two stroke build, otherwise known as Hellfire. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com. And today I have a real treat for you guys. Now guys, not only do I have over $600 of MX parts giveaways for you guys today, for any of you who have already entered to win Hellfire on MXRevival.com, but look at your bike, it looks ridiculous. As you guys can see, we are in the mock-up phase of your MC500 two-stroke build. Hanging off that gorgeous vine red frame from Fast Blast & Coat, we have your vapor blasted radiators, new cages on those bad boys, the handmade Huga cone pipe, We've got some special parts from Decal Works and MX Plastics, as you can clearly see. And I've of course also zinc plated all of your old gray KTM hardware to a way better than new finish. For me, guys, this is the carrot on a string phase. You've probably heard me say that in the past, but when all the parts start to hang off the mainframe, I start to get really geeked out, really motivated. And that's because basically everything that was in my head before this point is being extracted and now it is actually in a physical reality. I absolutely love that. And so in today's video, not only are we taking a sneak peek at your bike's new body and decals, but my boys at MX Plastics and Decal Works have also sent me a completely alternate set of decals and plastics for your bike. So in today's video, you guys get to vote on which set you like the best. This is so cool. We'll be able to fully transform the entire look of this bike that we already have going if we so choose to. Now when we're done here in my shop today, we're going to head over to Elite Moto Factory, link up with our favorite Uncle Tony. Tony and I are going to be assembling your complete bottom end today, the BRC500 engine. We're going to go ahead and install your crankshaft assembly as well as your transmission. Go ahead and close up the cases and of course, I can assure you we'll be screwing off like normal as well. So let's go ahead and kick off today's video with your decals that are obviously aimed at a specific someone. And yes, I'm talking about Bam Bam number 51, Justin Barsha. Now, if you guys know a little bit about my bike builds in the past, I had a number sequence going already, but I just could not resist while building your gas gas to throw his number on there. It was the perfect opportunity. And sometimes the internet can be a very rewarding place. It's such a small world and especially the moto community is so tight knit. Doesn't matter if you are a weekend warrior all the way up to a Barsha level rider. I'm sure he will at least hear about this or see it or a buddy of his will be like, check this out. It's just a very small world. Not only that, but when you guys see this thing on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, tag this shit out of him because you just never know. And regardless of all that, bam, bam or not, your bike is coming out absolutely amazing. Decal Works crushed it on this kit and yes, you're only getting the tip today. Of course, we wouldn't have anything to smash your badass decal works decals on if MX Plastics hadn't sent us a ton of alternate bodywork. So thank you guys very much for hooking up MX Revival, hooking up all of our viewers. So before we hop into today's all new MX parts giveaway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at that alternate set of plastics. All right, guys, time to crack into this Costco sized value pack of plastics and graphics for your ridiculous MC500 build. So here we have the OG. This is what's on the bike now, and this is the only other sneak peek you're gonna get. I don't dare show you the radiator shrouds yet. We save that to the end. So this is really bold and it's really clean and it's striking and it's also really familiar in terms of the way bikes sort of commonly look, I guess you could say. I really like this look, but I also like some of the alternate things that MX Plastics and Decal Works sent our way, especially because I didn't ask them to do this. This was completely up to my boy, Mike. Thank you so much, Mike Z, for doing this, going out of your way to design a completely different kit like I said, that I did not ask for, getting it all dialed in and sent out on another set of plastics. So guys, due to the fact that the bike is named Hellfire, this is what we're calling Hell Mode Activated. And if you like it, I wanna hear about it. This is basically a red on red with some ghosted numbers. And hopefully you can see it. There is a bunch of what we call silver shimmer in this kit. Silver shimmer is like a bunch of metal flake. I know it's difficult to see with the lights on the ceiling hitting this piece of plastic, but Look how freaking glossy they are, having said that. Go ahead and peel open the rear fender since you guys have already seen that in the other variety. Same thing, red on red with some ghosted logos. Mike and I were saying that this is very hellish, if you will. I still owe you guys a set of number plates since you've seen that too in the more standard bold kit. Let's go ahead and check those out. There's one. There's two. Now, another thing I'm loving about these MX plastics is that this stuff has fit flawlessly. It comes with all the bushings and grommets you need on these KTMs to snap your airbox door closed, all the little brass, excuse me, aluminum fittings that are in the plastics so that your plastics don't get smashed when you bolt them to your bike. All the factory hooks are in place. These are the things that grab your rear fender when they are snapped onto the subframe. Got some more hooks right there. Just very turnkey 
throw it on ready to go. You're not looking for the little bushings or trying to steal them from your old clapped out plastics. Even the black edges where your boot scuff on these rear number plates are there like normal. I really like that as well because I do like a bit of an OEM touch on bikes. But there it is, a little more red on red, some silver shimmer, very freaking cool. Very creative, Mike. Great job. Thanks so much for going out of your way to do this. And of course, we got to thank the Mac Daddy Ron himself for making this possible in the first place. Everything from MX Plastics and Decal Works. Thank you very much, Ron, for all your support and for hooking up our guys on YouTube. Unbelievable. Now, here's a plate I haven't really talked about yet, guys. This is actually a KTM plate. I have an idea. I may or may not use it, but I thought this would be a really cool way to break up or modify the stock gas gas look because these are pretty gnarly and these fangs are also pretty hellish actually now that I think about it. Got some extra decals as always. They always send extras, especially if you guys have uh, gas tanks that are not a shroud over tank design like the new bikes are doing where you have a tank where decals actually are sitting on the tank. You'll usually get another set of decals because those tend to bubble off. Decal Works knows that so they're not going to leave you hanging after you drop you know a decent amount of money on a kit. They're going to send you two sets of the tank decals, the ones with the sipes in them. Now, if you guys are ready for new decals, new plastics, you can hit up Decal Works. I have a really cool exclusive deal worked out with them for you guys. All you need to do is mention MX Revival, this video, whatever. They're going to give you a nice discount on your decals. And while you're there, if you'd like, as you can see, these decals are pre-installed. So you can actually get new plastics too. You can get your stuff ready to use. When you get this, you just bolt it onto your bike activate the glue with the heat gun and you are good to go. So easy, so hassle-free. I think I've told you guys in the past, I like putting decals on, but really, why would I do it any other way now when they show up in the box and they're just like this, ready to use? It's kind of a no-brainer. It saves me several hours and they do a better job than I do anyways. Let's go ahead and check out the graphics and plastics that are on your bike currently. That way you guys can let me know what your vote is. All right, guys, here we are up close and personal with the beast. This thing is looking very, very feisty. So on this kit, a little more straightforward, very bold, very clean. The white logos break away from the red base color really nicely. Maybe a little more standard in what you'd see on bikes. And something you guys may already know, I really enjoy matching the base color of the decal to the color of the plastic. If this were a gray fender, for example, it would have a really in my opinion, ugly breakaway between the two pieces. Obviously, those colors aren't gonna to go too well together in the first place, but a little idea as to how I like to keep things. So in my opinion, you cannot really go wrong with this look. I also really enjoy the match between the frame and the plastics. That came out about as good as you could get it. It's basically perfect in dirt bike building world. Again, that's a vine red frame if you guys need any powder coating information. Now these decal kits are actually identical in terms of how they lay out with logos and overall design. So it's really gonna come down to you guys letting me know what you like better, this bold look, or if you prefer hell mode activated with the red on red, ghosted logos, and the silver shimmer. All right, guys, I'm not gonna tell you which set of plastics and graphics I like better. I'm just gonna let you go ahead and do your thing with that. In the meantime, and while you're trying to figure that out, let's go ahead and get into today's all new MX Parts giveaway. Of course, today's all new MX Parts giveaway is going to be handled by one of our build team members, Decal Works. Guys, today I'm stoked. I get to give away two brand new, full custom, full coverage sets of decals from Decal Works. Of course, myself and everyone over at Decal Works wants to make sure your machines keep looking fresh at all times. And I'm stoked to be able to do this for you guys today because these decals are worth over 300 bucks a pop. This is a really big giveaway that you don't want to miss. So go ahead and head over to MX Revival. Get yourself entered to win Hellfire, the MC500. That's automatically going to put you in the running for every YouTube video's MX Parts videos, including today's Decal Works giveaway. When you donate to win Hellfire, you guys are also helping support OMC Raceway, which is one of our country's oldest motorcycle clubs. So you cannot lose. This is good stuff all across the board for everyone in the moto community. So guys, go ahead and get entered. Do some good for the moto community. Win some MX Parts and prizes. Potentially win a electric start. 500 cc 70 horsepower hellfire breathing monster bikes probably going to be worth about thirty-five thousand dollars. or and i've been forgetting to mention this you can also take home 10 grand cash instead of the bike if you so choose so like i said guys it's wins across the board all right guys so you've seen a little teaser on your mc500 build you've gone ahead and entered on mxrevival.com now you're in the running for a bunch of cool mx parts and potentially this bike now 
it's time to head over to Elite Moto Factory, link up with Uncle Tony, and go ahead and build this bottom end. So go ahead and put your safety glasses on. I know the dick jokes are gonna be flying. I don't want one of you guys to lose an eye. And pay close attention because Tony and I might have another giveaway snuck into this video somewhere. Let's do it. Back at Uncle Tony's. Hello. What the hell are you doing? Well, right now we're fixing to do some more uh, 500 work. Yeah. We are gonna do some bearing keepers. We're gonna do some bearing retainers. Some retainers, that's where right. we left yeah. off. Bearing retainers, we gotta put the kickstart boss in place because uh -huh. all that stuff was now in our set of cases here. Got all nice. the seals done. This was the one side I think that we captured. Yeah, if you guys miss time. it, it is in the last episode of the uh, 2023 Hellfire build. So bearings got all and the seals. Seals in place, counterbalancer, left side main seal, counter shaft, and our shift shaft seal. Yeah, we got our case bushings in the bushings arse in end of it there. Yep. Cool. And today, we are going to focus on trying to get the bottom end yep. closed if we can. So yeah. we got the, uh, the crank here from BRC Racing on the counter. We also have a bunch of stuff that's getting reused from the MC250 donor engine that I need to wash while Charles Tony's doing work. what Tony does. What's that? Charles is gonna work today. Yeah, he's he gonna is working to work. Today, but yeah, for sure. Do some, some work. Some work work, some not work just here. running the camera rig all the time. Nope. So yeah, we need to wash all the shift forks, transmission. Kickstart. Uh, some of the other little bits here. Yeah, kickstart. And- uh, Shift shaft, yeah. clutch hardware. Oh, that's right. We're gonna wash some of this too, so it's yep. ready. Even though we'll be doing these, would we would consider these exterior somewhat to the bottom end, right? As far as today's video goes. Yes. Yeah. This will just be a, a, a preemptive measure, if you will. Mm -hmm. So then that way everything is done. It's dry. It's clean. Um, so when we go to reassemble the engine, it's dry. It's ready to go. Yeah, It'll have had probably a week until we can yeah. touch base with one another again. So we'll be sticking those bad boys in here. The ultra heavy duty. Solvent oil tank. stripping bad boy. Yeah, this thing this thing stinks. Does it? So turn the vent up, we turn our fan on. Mm -hmm. Charles gets yeah, to he's wear got a really nice hood in here. Pretty his, kick ass. His super sweet mask today. Yeah. yeah, where's my mask? Would you mind? Oh, I'll go. Do, I'll do mask? you yeah. a kindness. Yeah, would you do me a kindness? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's right here on the on the press. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, pressing. Oh, oh, oh. No. Uh, this I don't know why it fits so well, but it's I don't know. Go ahead and... Oh, you want me to put it on? Yeah, oh, put sure. it on. I'll, I'll... Mm. <laughs> looks good on you, bro. <laughs> looks or, better on you. Yeah, Watch the bench, looks bro. Looks good in you, bro. <laughs> Wait a doggone minute here. <laughs> All right. What kind of game is this we're playing? Yeah, you don't want to know. So we're going to do some cleaning. Yep, we'll do some cleaning. We'll do a little building today. A little building. And at least get this thing... Somewhat. ...closed up. The bottom we got about end. four hours together today, so... Yep. We're going to put stuff in your bottom end. You said that, Charles. Yeah, but you're doing it. Wait a doggone minute. <laughs> what did I get myself into today? Yeah. All right. This is messed up. Ah, <laughs> Bob Saget. <laughs> the Adventures of Bob Saget. Yeah, that's for Tyler. I know Tyler likes our Bob Saget comments. Which Tyler? Uh, Tyler. Is it Winstead? He's from Tennessee, I think. Tennessee. He Tyler. got hurt. He's the one that got hurt. Yep, he's an OG. McGill. He's an MX Revival Gills? OG. What's his last name? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. I'm confusing the two Tyler's. You're right. He's got some old. Winstead bought a zinc plating kit. He did the MC build. He's a good good guy, too. Words. The Tyler's. Yep. The Tyler's. Tennessee Tyler. That's right. That's for Hope you. You're healing up, dude. Word. You crashed the Husky. No good. No good. He's got a lot of sick bikes, actually. Yeah, he does. He's got, I think he's got an old CR. Yeah. I've seen. And he's, he's a good dad, picture. too. I know that about him. We've Is talked he? a little bit about his. His Fatherhood, son. parenting. Yes, sir. Yep, good guy. Parenting things. Um, but that's this guy. So, Tennessee Tyler, this is Bob Saget's for you. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sh. Ah! All right, Chuck. It's my turn with this thing. That's right, you're running the rig. Yeah, I can't figure out if it's the chemicals that smell or if there's something on my face that smells kind of bad. Wait, what in the world? I'm not sure. Oh, what happened to your mask? I don't know, yeah. What is this, a grasshopper? It says Idaho bugs. Oh, yeah, they're big too. It's Idaho bugs, yeah. man. They got these you. things called Mormon crickets. That's, what not, <laughs> that's <laughs> not a Mormon cricket. Uh, what, what you got going on in here today? Oh, we're just washing some parts, so we're prepping. This is the push rod. You got me set up with your uh, your chem kit here. We got some clutch parts going on. Oh, boy. As you guys can see, this stuff is in killer shape still. It's, it's like amazing. brand new. Amazing. 
cool to see you run the camera. That's, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it's a it's a fun little device. Oh oh oh! Got some so, slow shift down. shaft there. Oh boy! There's another little uh, Idaho cricket. Or what do you call it? <laughs> what does that look like? It looks like a tarantula. Yeah, it definitely it's a is. Stinging bug. It'll bite your ass. It'll sure bite you. Yeah. So we're gonna what? We're gonna wash these parts up. We're in. We had me do a stage one bath here. Yep. Yeah. With the uh, strainers. Once I get the base layer off, going to the stage two bath over here. Actually, this thing's getting a little too drippy because I'm using up yeah. all the. All and the then, um, yeah, we'll dry it off with or blast it off with some contact cleaner. That's step yeah. three, right? Yep, I'm getting right this right. There, it'll max the sauce. And then we will uh, lay it on some, lay it on that there tray to dry, tray. right? Tray, tray. Yeah. Hold on, we're slow. I'm it's slow. Right here. Oh, you're, there you go. You got it. Yep. What the heck, Tony? Yeah. Let's if see, you go too far, go. then you got to roll all oh, the way back. We got the trays. Okay. And that one right there is going to be for the clean parts. Yep. Okay. Let's see if I can. And after that, we were going to uh, get down with some stuck nuts, and not the ones that are on my face. Those are, that's a grasshopper. <laughs> yeah. Not the grasshopper. Oh, you're right. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you watching yeah. at home, we're going to get with the stuck nuts and have an appointment for. Uh, some thread locker, baby. That's right. All right. I'm going to go set this thing down because I don't know exactly what I'm doing with Throw my it hands. on the ground. I'm not going to throw it on the ground. Yeah, that would be expensive. Uh, Charles, what you got going on here? Bro? All right. So we finished up with the solvent, oh boy, right? Oh, oh, hey, there we yeah, are. There you are. Yeah, finished up you. with the solvent. Now we're blasting it with contact cleaner. You told me this advances uh, the drying process yep. or speeds up the drying process. What kind of contact cleaner is that? It looks like some. Maxima. Oh, what? Contact cleaner. Oh, Maxima. Tech tips. Give us a call, guys. Yeah, bring us We'd up. We'd love to talk to you. Charles will wear the grasshopper on yeah, his face. Sure. All the time. Yeah, for sure. I'm asking these guys for sponsorship. <laughs> I got a dick on my face. <laughs> hey, we're professional here, man. Hey, you know, whatever keeps you hard, you know? For us, it's Maxima. Uh, <laughs> Bro, and, and, careful with that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that'll get you stood up, all right. And then I, so, yeah, it's dry. Throw it on the ground. Ground. Yeah, we got some dry, dry ish parts, and that's it, right? Lay them out. Good to go. I got a few more to do, and then these parts will be ready for assembly, more or less. I still need to get through this pile of stuff here. Tranny, what have you. Clutch. The Bud and, Lights. Uh, yeah, we're going to be using a lot of Maxima, guys. So, uh, what you got going on in the meantime? I'm trying to operate this. <laughs> yeah, you point, point it <laughs> there at the we ground. go. There we go. Got it. There we go. All right. So, what, what's over there? What are so, you doing? what I got over here. And I can grab some stuff, Follow too. Follow Charles. Can... Follow Charles. There you go. Okay, Tony function there he is there it is there he is so we got cases ready to go we got our tray over here with some goodies on it you're getting ready to throw down on these and throw some uh some thread locker on those uh retainer bolts and retainer what kind of thread locker? what kind of well none other than oh, the, the stock, stock nuts. nuts but what kind of what color would you use well, on i would those? go red red this, okay this thing's gonna go who knows the last bike was in pennsylvania and we'll probably never ever see that thing again so when it goes talking about away, YZ yeah, YZ Annihilator. Mm -hmm. So this way, it's more of a, a guarantee that we're not going to have a problem. Right. Red is basically full strength, yep. full steam ahead. Gotcha. I would rather there be mm -hmm. uh, difficulty to get the bolt like that out than yeah. easy. You got to show the people more stuff while you're talking. You got to pan that thing around. Oh, we're going to be like unsubscribe. Oh, these guys are, these these guys guys are, are doofuses. Yeah. One's got a grasshopper <laughs> on his face. So we got the cases here. And then we have our juggernaut, the cylinder head and the cylinder combination. Are you going to give this thing a badge like um, an right. annihilator? Yeah, I think we will. A little bit of real estate There's here. Some stuff. You guys let us know if you want Tony to put a logo on there. You let me know if you yeah. want me to engrave some. It's up to you too. We're not going to do it if stuff. you don't say to do it. So you want to see Tony engrave and let us know. That's what it is. And then we got to take this beast apart so we can get that thing in the engine today. I'm going to try to seal up the bottom end. That's why Charles is working on. We're gonna seal up your bottom end with some Yo, stuck nuts. Oh my God. All right, we've got all these parts nice and clean. They actually look amazing. <clears throat> they're, almost, these, they're almost dry. These clutch components are gnarly, bro. They're, you think that's acidizing on there? This with, uh, possibly. From the factory, I'm not sure. Probably some sort of hard anodized. Uh-huh. What do you think? Everything looks good enough up to Tony's, Uncle Tony's standards? The freaking cherry. All right, cool. Yeah, we, we hit the jackpot on this one. Chuck. In terms of condition? Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Seriously. For sure. Compared to the old Buster. Oh, the old. So what you got going over here? You, got, you did some uh, Uncle Tony prep while I was. Yeah, Charles in tank cleaning stuff. pots. 
So I got cylinder studs in. Mm -hmm. I just just dry in cases together, mm -hmm. just so it's easier to manage when you're torquing parts. I'm not cutting my hands or anything. Yeah. On the gasket surfaces. Cut so some grease on there. Got a little bit of assembly, a uh, Maxima assembly grease. Oh, there's specific. Maxima again. Give us a call. There you are, Maxima. Give us a call. This is by choice, folks. It's good stuff. Um, so now my stud installer for these studs doesn't fit because it's a 10 by 1.25. And what millimeter. is it? Something to do with uh, the, the side of the pitch. engine versus something else, or po possibly? But these are the OEM studs. Oh, that's they? true. Yeah, they're not bigger right. or anything. So for it's a, just a tool, you don't have. Yeah, 300, which is a 10 by 125, which is pretty standard. These are 10 by 1.5. Mm. Can you show the people the tool you're referring to? Because you have one that is the right size. Yes, so this right here is a six by 0.1. Okay, what does this little bad boy do? So this right here, there's like a little uh, roller or like a BB that sits on the top. Uh -huh. That makes contact with the top of the stud. And you can adjust its depth as well. Okay. So you just thread it on just like a normal nut. Mm -hmm. And then that way it will install this. Okay. And it's a 19 millimeter socket. So then that way you can actually torque your stud bolts. Nice. And so in the event that you don't have one of those. We go with the old double nut. The old stuck nut. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did yeah, there. Yeah, you see what I did there? The stuck nut yeah. together. Well, you guys have probably done this before. So in a pinch, you, you have do it. this, you, you cinch notice, it up. Yeah, he's got flange side, touching flange side. You get a good bite. And then that way, that will spin our stud. Mm -hmm. Yep, so in lieu of that tool, he's got something to bite onto. You guys yep. can see that. It's just the one time, like, they can they can slip a little bit. So you just got to be careful. So now you grab your torque instrument. And these ones, I'm going to 28 Newton meters. Newtonmeters. Which breaks down to 20 foot-pounds. So get a hold of this guy in one other way see if it's going to spin on me or not mm -hmm. with the double nut is I'm just going to mark it with a little sharpie dot. Gotcha. Just so I'm going to see it spin, right? So I can watch where it's going. And if mm -hmm. I start feeling this move on me and that's not going anywhere, then I know the nuts are spinning. Okay. Um, don't ever let your nuts spin. Don't let the nuts spin. AKA, get yourself a tube of these stuck nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this just works too well in so many scenarios. <laughs> Good this, job on the name, dude. This just feeds right into your... Uh, right yeah, he's into like, your... I got to get that that guy <laughs> some of my product. <laughs> that particular guy. Okay, torque. Beautiful. Torque. I can feel uh, or hear uh, the vibration against the wall yep. when that thing was shaking in your hand. So then we just break it loose again because we're going to use these on the other three left that we have to do. Recycle the nuts. The recycle these super, super special, awesome special tools. They got the job done. But wait, there's more. <laughs> All right, so you got done with these main four, yep, the yep. double nut One, method. Two, three, four. Yep. You just finished off this six. Sorry, I just interrupted. No, there. you're good. That's perfect. And how did you do set. that last, uh, uh, the, the previous? So I grabbed guy. my Motion Pro stud installer for six by 0.1 millimeter mm -hmm. still studs, whether it be cylinder or cylinder head, and just thread this guy down. And there's a little BB inside that will make contact. If you see this end here, it dimples it. And that is when you got to? Yep. That's when it bottoms out and then torque. then it starts to, then it grabs. Mm -hmm. Once it hits the top there, then it starts to grab the stud. I see. And spin. So right now I'm still loose on here. All right. Now I'm tight. Now I'm spinning. We can use a little Sharpie pen on these ones as well, just so we see our reference. And then this one we're gonna go, we start at eight Newton meters. Um, we're gonna finish off at nine. I just wanna feel it before I sign off on it. Right, just kinda wail it and the thing snaps yeah. or blow out these threads and oh way Jose. Yeah, that'd be the end of the day. Yeah, that would not I would that would not be a good day. Then I would be a pissed off Puerto Rican. A long legged pissed long -legged. off Puerto Rican. Someone trying to break into my truck. It's a long legged pissed off Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So we're starting at eight. But that would be my fault too. It'd be self inflicted. So For sure. Slow down. 
Take your time. That's the part that people don't realize, you know? It ain't like, a race. There's some, some wisdom in that. I just said that in the last YouTube video with the YZ. I said, look, Slow I got a bike with a dry air filter from the dealership. Didn't realize it was on the side of the track. Yeah. And it's my fault because I didn't check. Slow down. We're not racing in here. We're building quality shit. So no clicky? Not yet, but we're getting there. I can feel it coming. Slow and steady. There's that one. Okay, so that's eight. I go to 85. I'm just, I'm not grabbing this thing. I'm just using one finger. Yeah. Because I want it to stop. It's always good to start with one finger. That was not a penis joke, Charles. I'm a little surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this guy's not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Uh, it's more like a Coors Light comment, not a Bud Light comment. Hey, yeah, it's stepping it up. There, there it is. There we are, baby. Okay, and then I just give it a little, just come off. Yeah, I like that it uh, dimples yeah. at the top. I think that's really yeah, cool. You know, if you ever pull them out again, then you know the orientation. Yeah, somebody was here, well. right? Some, also. Sometimes this length is different. Yeah, I was noticing that right? about the uh, the main four studs. They were threaded deeper on one end. The protruding side is, has more threads, right, on these? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Studs look good, nice and shiny. And then the uh, everything perfect. Pretty mint. Yeah. So uh, what's next on the docket, partner? What are we doing? Is it time to put some guts in that bad boy? Well, we have to do our retainers. Okay, Remember, that's right. We have to do that, and then uh, then we can start some uh, mild assembly mm -hmm. of the bottom end. So that part is done. And then we can chuck it up in the engine stand and start assembly. Oh, we got a safety wire. We're going to work on drilling this guy out for our okay. counter shaft. Right. Um, yeah, before I played it. Before you played it. Because so, I don't want to drill through that plate. You want to tell the people what you mean by drilling that? Like, what would you what would you do that for, Uncle Tony? Well, Why would you drill a bolt? To retain it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, with safety wire. It's, right. It's more of a... It's like an aircraft, right? Helicopters, and there's there's a there's a mm. high, uh, a high standard for just retention because you're flying in a freaking chopper, you don't want just stuff to, to chop start up. falling out, right? Yeah. So factory. just from vibration, you're going factory, um, going factory, doing a little bit of factory stuff because these utilize a Bellevue style washer as like a retaining mechanism. Mm -hmm. And he's, that's what a he cup means washer, is that, there you go, there's the explanation. Right? And when you collapse that cup washer, it puts tension on the on the bolt. And it was kind of like when we explained the clutch, when we did the disassembly. Mm -hmm. So with the European clutches, they use a Bellevue washer. Yeah, cup. it's around here it's somewhere. A big ass, it's a big ass cupped washer is what it is. Oh, that one's under the basket, I believe. There it is, okay. Basically, so, the, the, the washer is also a locking mechanism. Yes. It's a, it's a spring. Yep. And we can go over here and we can show this. We can and have... this uh, counter shaft sprocket uses a similar but smaller style. And I will find it. This. You guys can see the gap. So we can talk about it. And the concave there. Here's the. There she is. And those Beauty. fatigue. Okay. Yeah, we got a badass one from Dirt Tricks. Dirt so Tricks has a mint one, anymore. actually. They're super hard. Mm -hmm. They're a lot thicker. Me too. So, so I'm talking about the <laughs> sprocket. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> so when this goes in here mm -hmm. and it's tight, these we're definitely going to use red stuck nuts. Okay. Um, for obviously uh, prevention of it coming out. Mm -hmm. Blue would do the task, but this is 60 newton meters. Okay. Now with this and this, we collapse this. A lot of the European bikes use kind of a similar, mm -hmm. unless it's a clip. I'm sorry, the Japanese will use a counter trap bolt. And they'll use some sort of a, a disc washer as well. Whether right, it be the a type that folds over. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, like Actually, there's probably one. There's probably one right here on this That one's got a foldy. Yeah. Right there. See? That one's got a foldy. Yeah, a foldy. Um, that's what that's called. That's the technical term. Foldy. Write that down. A foldy. Write that down. Um, so anyways, we collapse this. And these are kind of like one... I would only use this really one time. Oh, really? Time. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, um, I, I wouldn't even have thought to replace that more personally. More of a, dis- a disposable. Yeah. Just because once it's, it's fatigue. Sure. It's fatigue, right? You stress it out. You yeah. yield it, as Dave from yes. Bolt Motorcycle Hard would yes. say. Because this will bottom out, and it will it will put a load. The com- the complete circumference of the sprocket. Mm-hmm. Um, once it flattens it. Yes. Cool. Anyways, we're gonna poke a hole in this guy. Uh huh. So then we can grab the sprocket, and we can grab the bolt, and then we go on the on the loosening side of the bolt is where we wire tie to. Because if this thing starts to back out, the wire will stop it. Gotcha. What you got there? I got my stuck nuts. High strength. Strength. Thread locker. <laughs> what was that? Enunciate. <laughs> This is our maiden voyage. Okay, here we actually, go. With the stuck I, just, nuts. I just cracked this guy open. Cool. So I'm gonna do red on these guys. These are five by 0.8. And these hold the bearings from these will hold the retainers. Flying out. Yep, we'll hold these the plates in place. You guys can see a little groove right there where one of those will live. And guys, feel free to check out Sean's yeah. product as Thank well. Thank you, so Sean. New thread locker, really cool. Thanks for supporting the channel and the build. And of course, uh, last week's giveaways. So yeah, I, I I'm just stoked. He's a he's small time operation, supporting dirt bike riders. Yeah, that's what I said too. I I mentioned when I got it, I felt like it was made for me. You know, like it was made for dirt bike types. Totally. Which obviously you can use it on whatever, but yeah, it totally. just felt really, you know, oriented to what we do specifically. Totally. So I enjoyed that. Right now I am doing some Picasso. Just a little bit on those counter sinks mm-hmm. just because when they meet these surfaces i want it to be able to slide not okay grab. so that was assembly loop that was a little bit assembly above grease, yep. the thread locker yep and you you said you want that to slide when it hits the plate so that I counter can, sink in that yeah, plate get a good torque okay that's pretty cool okay so we're gonna go to 70 deca new tameters i'm just gonna it's seven newton meters because these are five by 0.8 so you don't want to go ham on these guys you probably have some kind of a besides experience like a torque chart or something like this or nice you just remember yeah bolt size mm-hmm. um five by 0.8 you don't want to go much more than like 80 on something like this and now in, in foot pound terms that would be like five like nothing you know, four like a, like a little pounds. hand cinch yeah. yeah tight Done okay deal. that's that now my paint pen oh yeah tony was here so i like to just mark them and then we will peen them there's that word again we could draw a picture i'll be yeah you you know what want me to draw a picture you could yeah what do you usually draw inside of cases it's kind of like an autograph i don't know let's see would richie be proud richie would be ecstatic so there's a peen mark Mm -hmm. there's a peen mark then we can also, then the reason for this is you can see, like if you know, someone goes to rebuild this engine one day, yeah, you would see if there was movement, but the peening right. prevents that. I'm going to just take this, hit the bearing here, then you can see if your bearings spin. Mm-hmm. And some of these are like wicked tight, as we've discovered. Right. And this is a proactive measure for the next guy, too. Yes. Aside from just obviously preventative some detail work that we just don't want to overlook mm-hmm. just when we go to disassemble it at some point in time you can see if your bearing races are spinning in the cases now on these that do not have retainers not that the retainers keep those from spinning anyways right that, those could still spin underneath the retainer technically these ones likely do you yeah think? very uh, yeah it's pot if the cases were really so out. out yeah like if it had like 10 sets of bearings gone through it okay people were just bam bashing things uh-huh. out because you yeah. when you bash them out like that you're good when you bash them out with no heat like the same way we put bearings in cases mm-hmm. we take them out right expand. So you expand the case and then that way the bearing's going to heat up as well obviously just not as fast as the aluminum. not as fast as the aluminum it'll still be wicked hot but it just makes it coming apart easier mm-hmm. so then, when a, when you get to that point something does spin you need a new case is yep. it that's pretty much yeah. what are the dangers of having that spin 
because obviously it's still it's in there pretty tightly in, in yeah it's not like spinning like the inner race would be yeah. it's moving though under load uh -huh. so when you load the bearing it's it's actually well, the bearing could be bad number one number two the uh you're gonna load the outer race as well so it's not going the bearing's not gonna do its job the way that it should okay so you end up you end up building friction it isn't so much a danger to the transmission shaft that's housed in it but more so it's not gonna operate properly and it's probably gonna fail prematurely something like that yes potentially okay i understand i've never really seen it come to that right i've just seen the bearings move okay just the slight Main bearings just from a oh tony you did you just smear your, i just smeared my paint, paint? <laughs> bob saget oh bob saget now just i gotta redo that paint and then one thing one thing to point out is when you are painting bearing surfaces just touch the outer rays you don't want paint to go down in your bearing mm, got it so there you go that's it where should i draw a picture charles i'm gonna draw one right here yeah yeah i'll yeah. sign it i'll just i'll just do this here we that'll go. be fun tony what do you think does your name use conventional letters or, or something else? Yeah, it looks like you're going to behave yourself. <laughs> On this spot, I am. Okay. Tony. Tony. Well, it should have been Uncle Tony, but I'll give you a pass. There's not much real estate in there. All right, you bunch of buttheads. Jeez. This one's for all you that? freak shows out there. It's This is an elephant, okay? It's a baby elephant. Uh-huh. I've really been working hard on him. You are quite the artist. It is a vein. It's an elephant. Oh, I see it. You see the elephant? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> got some curvature to it, bro. Is that the scale? You <laughs> damn skippy, that's... Wait. That, yeah, that's the scale. All right. I thought so. <laughs> Welcome. Hellfire. Yep. It really is a rocket ship. This one will take you to places that you probably can't get out of. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, too. <laughs> I got my special tools, mm -hmm. got my center punch, okay. and my hammer. All right. I'm going to show you guys yes, how to peen over yep. a screw head, in this case, these bearing retainers. So I come in here, and I find the edge with my punch. Can you get that, Charles? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's a better lighting get that on. edge, but I go over to where the screw is. Just get the edge. That's pretty good. Can you see that right there? There's the edge. There we go. Yeah. And then I'm going to actually go back onto the screw. Mm -hmm. Bringing it into the screw a little bit? Bringing the screw into the retainer together. And then I'm going to mash it like this. Kind of angle the punch. That's a good hit. Whack it. Okay. You see how we folded that edge of the screw over into the retainer? Yeah. Okay. So what will happen is now, if it thing wants to move, mm -hmm. it's going to stop because now there's a there's a roll into the retainer as well. You kind of lock them together. For sure. Sort of like a Woodruff key in a way. Yes, sir. But now I'm gonna do this. A man-made one. Man-made. You do uh, a couple? I do four. Oh, four. Industrial Sometimes strength. Sometimes you can do two, sometimes you do four, and then you do one. Like, I'm like, you know what? I don't want this son of a bitch going anywhere. Right. But you also don't want to break the screw loose. You, you, do, you do it with a Loctite, sorry, the stuck mm -hmm. nuts wet. Because okay. you don't want to do it when it after it later on. Don't give it too much time. It, after it solids yeah. up, yeah, you'll break then you it can free. Break on. It free. I always do it with it with the thread locker wet. There's another one that was a little smaller, but we rolled it over. Mm -hmm. Cool, right mm -hmm. on. So two more, and you're good. And I'm gonna call that good. What you got going down now? Oh, I'm just putting a kickstart lock in place mm -hmm. and then uh, a little more more uh, red more prep, stuck nuts. Little red stuck nuts on it just for preventative measures pretty straightforward deal yep i don't want it coming out what's our next steps you're, you're pretty much going to be ready to drop some stuff into these center cases on yeah we are very very uh very close charles oh, we got a safety wire or sorry drill mm -hmm. our counter shaft bolt for safety wire but then once that's done, then you can plate that, and it will be quite fancy. Bueno. 
These are ever so slightly larger than the screws that hold down the bearing retainers, yep. right? Yep. So is it a similar, or not, obviously it's similar, but is it the same value or does it let it it's, step up a little more? Bit? Six mil, you can run to about, well, it's 100 deca newton meter, which equates to 10 newton meter. Okay. Right, you got that bad boy loaded up in the vise. It's yes. a pretty flamboyant vise you got, pal. You know, I got it for a pretty sweet deal. A screaming Wilton. deal? Yeah, screaming deal. This Wilton vise, so I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's really good. I'm just playing. I don't have it's to awesome. clamp near as hard, but I wanted yeah. the black one. But the black one was like 150 bucks more. We can send it to Dean. He'll powder coat it. That or is a good idea. It. Dude, yeah. You could put your logo in it. That'd be pretty sick. Oh, that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, let's do it. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. So, so I'm going to try. Doing? You got another gonna, center punch? I got my automatic center punch. So I'm going to try to find center. Uh huh. Because with this one, it doesn't go. I just want to put one hole in it. And sometimes these need. sprocket bolts get really. They're really hard. Mm hmm. I haven't drilled one of these in a long time, but I don't think they're as hard as like a... a You're just a trying Japanese. to get through into that hollow through spot. So I can wrap around. So here I'm, I'm located where I want to be and it moves, of course. Try to find center. Knock a punch in it. So my bit won't walk on me. And I'm going to start to drill this but then i'm gonna have to come around mm -hmm. and drill from the inside out gotcha you start to have to go at an angle? angle i'm gonna have to go at an angle from uh -huh. this one this one i'm gonna go straight it seems like your punch made a decent dimple in that yep. as far as the hardness goes so so we'll find out but i use a 16th of an inch for drill okay. bit and these things will break very easily you lubricate that with anything wd or nope. grease or anything you just go for it i get in the harbor freight super cheap okay so you could throw them in the trash shites. A lot of times I would use my drill press, but since this one has to, I got to catch an angle as well. I'm just going to do it by hand. Ah! Mm -hmm. oh! See? Who know? <laughs> there it goes. It'd be nice if when they broke, they were sharp again. Somebody make a drill bit that does yeah. that. You know what sucks you know? too though? When you get through it, that one really was soft. Yeah, that thing snapped. That barely even did anything. On it. Thanks, Harbor Freight. Um, Not what we paid for. This is true. So, just got to ease it up, Tony boy. That's uh, bit number two. Let's see how long it lasts. Let's see if I can lube and run the rig at the same time. There you go, there you go. Oh, God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> A little, little extra. Whew. All right, so you called it. Bit sometimes breaks off. Oh, it might have fallen out. Did no, it, fall it out? didn't. Okay, oh. you got it. So the chunk of it is in, in there. Did it fall out? It may have. It actually looks clear all of a sudden. Oh, we were going to show you a trick on how to get that out, but maybe we still can. What would you have done if the bit was stuck in there still? Well, that wasn't the one that broke up. I think it might have fallen out, Charles. Yeah, I wiped it off. Well, that's good. So anyways, so if this happens, you take your automatic center punch like this. This doesn't work every time. I'm just going to show you a little trick in cases, just like drilling out banjo bolts and things like that. I've had that happen many times. And you guys could see it started to come through Catch. and that's, that's why it caught and snapped. I feel it. I feel, I just feel the edge of, yeah, that's in there still. That's the bit. So. I'll try to work from the inside out now to break it free. That's it right there. These came out? I see. Where's your hand at? Here, I'll put it right here. Look at that. So Fine specimen indeed. Don't ever panic. Don't fully panic. Yeah, just buy a new bolt. <laughs> at worst case, yeah, yeah buy whatever. a new bolt. Clean up the mess. All right, guys, there it is. That is the drilled bolt. Later on, Tony will run some safety wire through this. It's going to look very factory, but in the meantime, I'm going to take it back to my shop, strip this ugly gray plating off, vapor blast it, get it nice and shiny uh, as the base before a new plate of zinc, get it looking like everything else in the chassis, and it should look pretty good. All right, man, what you got going over there in the engine stand? <clears throat> well, I got the, uh, the right side case half mm -hmm. chucked up in this bad boy because we're going to start putting some stuff together today. Nice. I think it's good looking. It is good looking. Very nice. 
Um, so we got to put the crankshaft in. Okay. Transmission, shift forks, and drum. Some of which is right here. Mm -hmm. Nice and clean. Tony nice is so clean. confident in his ex inspection of those that they didn't even need to come apart because this uh -huh. bike was so brand new, uh, the donor yeah. bike. Yeah, I had hardly any time on it. Yeah. Even Pretty the, cool. Yeah, even the shift star, is, it almost looks like it wasn't even spawned. The drum there is amazing. And then the, so uh, wild, it's just the way they make that. I was telling Tony, it feels like a piece of plastic. It's yeah. so stinking light. Super lightweight. And where's the uh, crankshaft right now? Uh, crankshaft is in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Cooling off. Cooling down just to make this. Uh, words, Tony. <laughs> words. <laughs> to install uh -huh. the right side of the crankshaft into this right side main bearing. This that, is a roller. Yeah. Uh, a roller. Words, bro. Come on. They're eluding me, Charles. Yeah, ball bearing. We're, we're talking about bearing. versus the other the roller case. bearing, which has a, a, a race that's on the crankshaft itself. So you guys can see roller bearing. The inner race is missing from caged here. Caged ball, roller, caged ball. And so if the uh, crankshaft assembly is in the fridge slash freezer, that can only mean one thing. There must be some heat coming somewhere I too. I got a socket on the hot plate right now that I'm gonna use to put on that bearing race to heat up the inner race, mm -hmm. swell it up just a little bit, and then that way, We'll take the cool crankshaft. It should just slide right in. And that socket, guys, will go right here. Yep. Expand this a bit. Not yeah, not the outside, just the inside, real quick. I'll let it sit there for a couple minutes. Get the crankshaft while it's doing that. And it should just fall right in. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Air quotes. Air quotes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Kill it. Let's um, see it. So right now. Okay. Okay. Tip this guy sideways so it our socket can just rest on a little there. shelf grab it with the pliers don't use your fingers hot socket let that sit there you going to be checking that with a temp gun probably or no we just kind of have just a read watching on. the clock a couple minutes okay and then i'll get the crankshaft out of ye old fridge. Got the fridge. Everything gets the love around here. Mm-hmm. Need to. Just makes life easier. This is the side that's going into the bearing we are heating currently, right? Correct. So you guys can see the other side. That inner race is already on the crank that goes inside this sucker. That's sort of a, is it like a KTM exclusive kind of design? Not exclusive, like they came up with it or anything, but you don't see that on Japanese bikes, right? What do you mean? Like the two different style bearings for the crankshaft assembly? Uh, you know, I saw them first on Hondas. Oh, okay. On left side. And then mm -hmm. I remember RMZs, we used to source a bearing uh -huh. for the left side, just so when we split the case, it made life way easier. Okay. Because so it's not go, specific to you know, these guys. When you would do that, what would happen is the, the bearing would come out of the case with the crankshaft. Boom! No, to be honest, I didn't test fit that to begin with, but that's still a good tip. <laughs> yeah, it worked great regardless. Yeah. Nice, that was easier than maybe that bearing, any of the bearings that yeah, went Some of the case. bearings were wicked tight. Killer, so now we're moving on to the old transmission. All right, Tony's over there doing some more prep type things. I wanted to show you guys this badass engine fastener kit. So this isn't, or may now be on Bolt's website, but these kits before our work with the YZM, the YZ500, and this engine did not exist. So really cool, Dave and crew, thank you for going out of your way to read BRC's Bolt schematics and develop something for us from scratch, which can then be used by all of BRC's customers. So really pumped on these. Of course, it is the dished head bolts that I love. Uh, they look like sort of like a tie, but they have a nice bright coat of zinc. And for you guys who have been following along so far, this is the color or I guess shine or brilliance that I've been chasing with all of the chassis hardware that is normally that ugly KTM gray. So in order to get those bolts to match Dave's bolts. I've been stripping, vapor blasting, and zinc plating, all that stuff. So everything is gonna be very cohesive, very bright, very good looking when this bike is done. But you already knew that. 
So another cool thing, some of you guys have picked up some Bolt products already, but literally every single thing is labeled. So we know where to go and these bolts will be an exact match. So if you guys have a BRC or even better, a Japanese bike that Bolt has been covering for quite some time, you can literally buy these. They're like 30 bucks for these kits. They come with any applicable crush washer you may need as well. Like this is the head, it comes with all six crush washers for that bad boy. Um, pick one of these up. You don't need to be rebuilding your engine to do this. You can just grab one of these and pull all the bolts in your existing engine out one by one and slide these suckers in. So I'm pumped to be able to work with Dave as always. And these are gonna look so sick. Thanks Dave. In the late great words of the great Colonel Sanders, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Whoever uh, lets Charles know the name of that movie first might win something. Do you want another quote? Do I want another quote? Yeah, do you want a quote from that movie? Uh, do I want a quote from that movie? Yeah, like best quote from that best movie. Best quote from that wins movie. Wins whatever. Should win something. The comment giveaway is this If week. that's up to you, but yeah, okay. I think that's fair. All right, cool. I don't even know what movie that it'll is. It'll make you laugh. <laughs> All right, It'll good. make you laugh. Will it make me cry? I don't know about cry, but. What you doing there? I'm just greasing up some stuff. So you're in that little crevasse. Oh. You made a comment earlier about some of the factory grease ping potential. Yeah, it looked like there was a little bit of grease in there from old Hansi boy. I mean, we're that fresh. There, yeah, you can see it in there. I don't know if your light will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, kind of on that. That little, the, yeah. where the clip comes apart? Against the gear on the right, guys. Yeah. yeah, there you go. A little bit of assembly grease. Hans's famous grease. I need to get in there with a Q-tip. These things are practically brand new. Brand new. This bike is gonna be sick. What you doing there? I'm just greasing our center case gasket. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned last time why you do this and it actually came in handy when I was fixing the, the YZM. Old, yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah, it, I was able to reuse that gasket, which is not what I wanted to do. I was just in a position where I had no choice, but for those of you who may have missed it, why the hell are you lubing up? that gasket <clears throat> I like to grease paper gaskets um, well it, it just simplifies if you know the engine ever has to come back apart and you don't you're not sitting there scraping gaskets for you know 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes for sure even two minutes right like the thing will literally just peel right off definitely You've never seen them leak like a freaking greased cookie sheet man and Charles can, come right off yeah tell you from experience now like it works so I appreciate, I learned this. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it was on, I guess it was Geico Honda or what became of Geico Honda. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just greased this because it sucks scraping gaskets. We're like, why don't we grease them? It's Tried such it. a pointless time suck. Yeah, and it worked, it never leaked. Just just the regular Maxima waterproof grease is what we used. Maxima, give us a call. This is the Maxima assembly grease right here. So. I love this stuff. I've always loved the Maxima products. Mm -hmm. um, Man, that suspension stuff. clean is something else. That stuff's gnarly. That stuff, yeah, that that is that works better than brake cleaner. Yeah, that stuff's gnarly. Using a ventilated space too. <laughs> yeah. um, or you'll be on the moon. Or you will be on the moon. Well, there's multiple reasons why I do like to do this. Obviously, if it comes apart, it's easy, but also locates the gasket and holds it still. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of putting like a little bit of tack on that bad boy. Yep. So when you drop it on, it is uh, it basically seals up against the surface really well. One last dab. I'm hitting a little bit more. Just gathering my thoughts and making mm -hmm. sure we have everything ready to go, laid out, got all our bolts laid out. We're, yeah, looking good. Um, I'm not going to grease them quite yet. I'm going to find locations, then pull them out, then grease them. Okay, them back. right. What you doing there? I'm going to take this assembly. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to try to thread it in this hole. Son of a biscuit. So what's the deal? You got those coupled together. They're obviously going to be like that when they go yep. in. You can't put those in one by one then? No. Or could you? No. Nope. Okay. So it's a little bit like the YZ, but not quite as convoluted. But I can hold it with my hand like this, right? Mm -hmm. So these gears are going to stop one another if it's not together. You understand? Because this one, smaller, bigger, mm -hmm. bigger, smaller. So this won't pass this. So you have to pre-assemble it in your hands, mm -hmm. much like I am here. Gotcha. And then I go in. I got my washer on the back of this guy. I got, oh, I didn't grease that one, Charles. Watch this Tony. Maneuver. Watch this maneuver. Look at that. Maxima, for all of your dirt bike racing needs. 
And then Give us a call. Sponsors. <laughs> Stuck nuts. <laughs> Get with it, Maxima. <laughs> Come on. All right, here we go. Bye, Tony. Bye. Thanks for It's a pretty cool shot, on. actually. Mm -hmm. Everything looks awesome. There we go. That's it. Almost. We'll All you gotta do is press his button. Press his button. Come on, Barry. Come on. I know you're there. I, I see you. I hear you. I'm a dummy, Charles. What happened? Cut. What'd it be like? Got this stupid transmission in. Backwards. Oh. See that flip maneuver right there? there you didn't go. even know. I was like, watch this. Dude, you know what's great about that? People are going to be losing their freaking minds in the comments, right? Hey, Paco. The people that know. Hey, Paco. It's all right. You guys, uh, we leave your stuff in like that for engagement. Yeah, I totally, <laughs> so, I totally did that on purpose. Yeah, please boost the video. testing you guys. Okay. Nice. Look at that. Goes in a lot easier. Like she was when meant it's, for uh, Pointed the right direction, eh? Yes. Nice. Doofus. There we go. Okay, nice. transmission's in place. Crank shift. So, is in do you place. do anything uh, aside from that that particular lube before this thing gets closed up? I don't remember. Do you shoot any more stuff in there? This goes together like this. So this this will like dealing with a two-stroke. Obviously, we get our lubrication source for the engine from our fuel. Mm -hmm. The transmission. This is already has some lubrication, and then mm -hmm. we'll obviously fill with oil start it up start cycling things sure. but until we start cycling things this assembly grease the mm -hmm. transmission will be okay um without any we could just for preventative measures being that we didn't assemble the transmission with any sort of a grease uh-huh so we could take a little bit of oil and dribble it around the transmission okay. roll it around so at least it has some right um they can go together dry and be okay, okay. these are not pressure fit much like some of the newer uh, four-stroke transmissions and clutch assemblies, they're uh, they're oil pressure fed. The new stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's you want to have some oil on there, at least build up some oil pressure before you actually start the bike to run it for the first time. So that's something like uh, <clears throat> hold the kill switch down, it, yep. crank it, get some oil pressure gotcha. built up, and then you can fire off the bike. Yeah. Yeah, man. So tell me one more time, this luscious red just lusty oh. grease who makes that well that one comes from maxima man it's this one right particular in particular is the assembly grease maxima get at, get at us maxima maxima you listening <laughs> come on somebody tell them trevor trevor listen up um yeah so we're gonna finish buttoning this thing up cool what's next we got uh forks and drum yep shift forks drum in a left hand case now these both look the same to me you're trying to id these forks but there's three there's a three punch mm -hmm. and a two punch okay i see the dots on there but on this side it's the same 19b the pin location looks the same interesting i don't think i just answered my own question what's up one dot oh one two three sequence gotcha two and the austrians sure are clever one, two. Sorry. That's a camera. That's a camera. And three. three. So was uh, two on the top or the bottom? Bottom. This would be the last one to place. Just for ease of getting to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take my little shift fork pin and put this in so it doesn't fall out. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that guy. We have our number two. Who does number two work for? Number two. <laughs> number, number three, you got to be careful, guys. Yeah, you don't. that's too much coffee. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise known as a shiss. <laughs> yeah. I just shissed all over myself. Oh boy. Oh boy. And then we're gonna pin it to win it. Okay. Uno, dos, tres. And then we will do our our test shifts mm -hmm. once the the shifting mechanism would be in next and up we got old greasy old greasy coated with none other than the finest the industry's finest grease available grease available from maxima specific assembly grease watch this trick 208 899 <laughs>
0713. And check out MX Skillshack while you're at it. Yeah, we're going to be seeing that real soon. If you guys know what MX Skillshack is, or you watched the last video, and you made it that far, thank again, you. Yeah, thank you. You are one of the OGs, and uh, I busted out all three episodes worth of film for the RC4 replica build. So I'm going to start sifting through that and editing all that stuff and getting that up on the site. And pretty cool, figured out the website lets me, or Tony, build little quizzes to move on to the next video module. So pretty stoked on that. And that'll be fun. So we get to quiz your asses. So I'm going to throw a little grease on this one. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, let me let me just get my, my tub, my special stuff. Yeah, what kind of grease are you using? <laughs> This is Maxima assembly grease. Yeah, and what do you like about Maxima? Oh, what do I like about Maxima? Assembly grease. Well, in particular, you'd like the way it makes ever everything so gently go goes around that lip seal. So nicely. And it's sticky. I, I like assembly lube. I have used uh, Redline assembly lube for a long, long Oh, you just long lost time. our sponsorship, you that, son that's of a okay. bitch. <laughs> I'm just giving the people some information. Yeah, we'll let you slide on the long, <clears throat> tight, stuck. So I thing, use but... that on. <laughs> I use that on uh, bolts. Uh huh. The, the assembly lube. Uh, yeah. This one right here. Oh, okay. And this maximum assembly grease. I use on a lot of steel surfaces. You say, is this? This is also maximum. No, that's Or Bell is the forbidden name? That's Bell Ray. Okay. I call that Black Death. Black Death. Oh, okay. That one gets stuff. all over your face. Yeah. And you don't even know it. <laughs> And you, you go, go in there like, like a like, freaking what the uh, crap like a burlesque happened? queen. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. But no, this I really have grown to love this Maxima assembly grease. It works really well. Professionals choose one brand, Professional. and that brand is Maxima Racing <laughs> Oils. Now you think Eagles are just ah! 208 899. <laughs> 0713, but don't text us. Calls we will only. Not answer. Looks like you're ready to slap that BZ on there. Right? I feel like a I feel like a I feel like an infomercial. <laughs> Ricky Ma <laughs> Billy Mays here. <laughs> with Oxy with Clean. OxyClean. But wait, there's more. Oh, I missed one. What you do? Oh, oh the bop sag it. Right so it looks like you've dove back into that Maxima assembly grease. <laughs> Is it because you love it so much? I do, I just enjoy spreading it all over. You just can't get enough slather. Uh, there's not enough. <laughs> Need more. Okay, get up there. You, you too. 208. Shut up. 899. 0713. Text Maxima to 208. <laughs> Text Maxima. Yeah. 899. <laughs> Get the damn camera out of my face. <laughs> you can't stop using this stuff. I just, I'm making sure I'm getting adequate lubrication. Put down the brush, partner. I'm it's done, okay. I'm done, I'm sorry. It's not worth it. It's an intervention. I swear, I'm just trying to help. Tony, that's enough Maxima. That's enough. You're cut off. Lock the doors, family traps you in a room. <laughs> the CEO of Maxima comes out. It's like, we have to have a talk. Listen. We have to have a talk. We know you love our products. But it's getting and we've been meaning much. to call you, <laughs> but we, we even know your you. number. <laughs> but we texted we you on texted accident. You. <laughs> Why didn't you call us back? Yeah, what happened? Are you trying to get the end of the transmission shaft to pop through that this little slave hole? This one. Man, things got real serious over here all of a sudden. Got all quiet. These cases came out so good. <laughs> great. My little, mm. my little tapper. Tappy time. Just want to tap it. It in. Just tap it in. Kind of making your rounds on the part. Left, right, up, down. Just give it a tap in. There it goes. Tap, tap. There it goes. Just need a little tap in. Dude. Yep, nothing a little bit of Maxima assembly grease can't handle. Say, Tony, what is that you have there? This is Maxima racing oils. Assembly grease. Industry's got, finest. Finest. It's got bits of real panther in it. <laughs> it's made out of real tornadoes. Real tornadoes <laughs> and thunderstorms. Okay, we are. 
bottomed out, down to the bolts. So this actually is our up top. So you're checking these out to see, you can basically tell if these bolts are in the right locations by how much they stick out, right? Yeah. Kind of when they're seated before you thread them. Correct, the mundo, and I'm just getting them in spot so I can go back to them, grease them up, mm -hmm. and then finish it off. Perfect. Yeah, it's man. a little bit of hunting and pecking right now. Because sometimes we might have some extra bolts or something. Right. But that no, does Dave, happen. Dave, like we should be dialed on this for sure. I just you know, a lot of times he'll put extra bolts in to yeah. cover varying models, right? Totally. So. And then we'll go and remove them. They look so good in there. Super. Bolts look good. Studs came out killer. They all match. Mm. Good work. <laughs> you know, Tony. Yes, Charles. Uh, whilst looking over this beautiful tray of Bolt motorcycle hardware engine fastener kits, I also noticed that there was a liberal helping of what looks only to be Maxima assembly grease. <laughs> There's no tears in there, it's just a liberal helping. <laughs> I like that. 208! 899-0713. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we need some of this too. <laughs> uh, guys, please. No, seriously, we're going broke. Help, like, us, out, help us out, please. Yeah. We really like this stuff. Yeah, we do. I, just, I buy it all the time. Yeah, because honestly, we use this more than to that. clean off the residual yeah, from this. That. So they're kind of a package deal. Yeah, totally. It's I mean, stuff. just look. God, come on. Look at it. It's on my shelf. Look at my day-to-day. -day. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, no, pay no mind. Pay no mind. Get out of there. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? This is the one and only. <laughs> Blowing it, Chuck. That's a tester I've never tested because I can't break away from the Maxima. That thing did feel full. It was definitely full. I didn't even touch it because I keep doing this. Maxima. Maxima. I, can't, I don't do my hands. For all your motorcycle oh. chemical needs. Oh. Text Maxima to <laughs> 208. <coughs> this QVC? Yeah. This is QVC? You could be the Vanna White of Maxima. Not, shut, you know that? No, shut your mouth. What? I'm not. She's a gorgeous. She's a, she's a saint. I'm not Vanna White. I will not dress up. Don't even get any funny ideas. You could be Vanna Brown. Vanna Brown. <laughs> okay. Torque time. Torque. You did all the crisscross, and now you're going in a circle? Yeah, I like to go around. Double check, yeah. This one I didn't. For that reason, for right, that there. Reason right there. And then I count them. I know I have two more. I didn't get these two. Okay, in the center there? Yeah, I went across. This. Oof, it's coming together, bro. It's getting there. The monster is going to be breathing soon. 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. 13, 14, 15 in the center, and you did them first. Yep. That's it. Your bottom end is assembled. Except for today. Uh -huh. Roll that bad boy up. Sure, I'll throw that there. Stout, such a monster. I think it's a hog. Such a freaking beast. Love it. I'll blow my back out taking this thing out of the freaking stand. I got you. Traces of it could be found everywhere. <laughs> we used a plethora. It and we need the to replenish. It was literal lifeblood of the engine itself. <clears throat> Maxima it starts. 208. <laughs> 899. <laughs> 0713. That's it. Almost. You got it. You uh, can do it. There we go. Looking good. Looking so good. Alrighty. Well, that is a job well done for today. You want to give this fancy girl a spin? Show the people what you created. Well, you just, you created it. You just brought it to me. I drew yeah. pictures on it for Christ's sake. We all sense. created it. Yeah, where, where is that anyways? I just, that's like a signature. I, I thought guess. it was on the inside. Oh, you mean the, the elephant. Oh, okay. Boy. That's my baby elephant. <laughs> it sure is. I've really been working on it. <laughs> Looking good. Solid day. Looking forward to round three. Tying that yeah. thing up. Yeah, it should be done at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good day today. Hope Maybe. you guys learned something and uh, enjoyed all of the banter. And uh, yeah, I think we landed our first corporate sponsorship. Yes. Thank you, GasX. <laughs> <laughs> 208 899 0713. Text Maxima. You guys get the point. We better hear from you, sons of bitches. <laughs> We're doing a lot of plugging right now. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I'll catch you next time. 
Thanks for your help. And for everybody else, Skillshack oh, modules are oh. coming soon. Oh yeah, mxskillshack.com. What was it? Too much metal? Yeah, too much too metal, much for, metal one for one hand. hand. I like it. Catch you guys soon. Bye, fellas. Well, guys, that's a wrap on today's video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, and I cannot wait to show you what is coming for Hellfire next. Thank you guys so much for watching week after week, and thank you also for spreading the good word about what we're doing over here. Now, if you guys would like to catch some more of your MC500 being built, you can go ahead and check out this video right here. And if you guys would love a shot at winning Hellfire, as well as winning all these MX parts giveaways, you can go ahead and get yourselves entered right here. Until next time, guys, shred safe, and I will see you next episode where we continue to level up your MC500 once again.